So you want to learn how to create wavy text in your designs. That's what we're going to do today. We're not going to stop there though. We're actually going to use the distort tool and I'm going to show you how to distort text into a shape. So today's going to be a ton of fun. And if you're new here, this is episode two of our design series. This is for beginners and people who don't want to use Illustrator. <laughs> so if you missed episode one, I'm going to pop that up above so you can go over and check that out. And you are with Kim Byers. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are back in Kittle, and if you've not already, I'll go ahead and put the link down in the description below for you to sign up for your free Kittle account. But I go over all of that in episode one, as well as how to use templates, which is what you see here across the bottom. And But today, we are going to get a little more detailed. So let's go ahead and pop into the canvas. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a new project, and we're going to be able to select presets. Now I typically use a POD preset because I like this particular size. Um, it's a 42 by 4800 pixel. I find this is super easy or you can go over into settings right here and just set up a 1200 by 1200, whatever it is that you want to create. I just typically click this one and create. And so now I have this artboard. And so I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so that you can see it. Now I have set up multiple artboards for our project today, but I wanted to show you how to get to a blank artboard. And if you look here, you can title it here. You can also do this drop down. It's going to give you the opportunity to duplicate a project, um, find all of your projects, the guides, so the grids, like if you want to be able to see grids on your sheet, and change it from pixels to inches. If you're going to be doing like a eight and a half by 11, something you wanna print out, all of that can be found in this little hamburger menu over here on the left. Okay, so I've set up a couple of artboards for us to go through and actually three different projects. So this first one, so if you have a blank artboard, you would go over to the side panel on your left and click on text and it's going to give you options. So you could choose some of these that are already here by different types or you could just choose an add headline. So if you do that, it's going to give you this small little box and over to the right, it's going to pop up and it's going to give you the opportunity to choose color, text, all size, all of these different things. Click off of it and then click back on. You can actually use the handlebars and make it larger this way, or you can go over and fix your font size here. So once you have this, you can also choose a font. So I used Sunny drop, which I just think is so super cute for that retro vibe, but there are lots of font choices. And the nice thing is you can also upload your own fonts and we'll, we'll go through that in another video. But if you are working with Creative Fabrica or sites like that, and you want to import your own fonts into Kittle, that is absolutely possible. So with Sunny Drop, um, that's what we're going to do this fabulous. I'm going to actually delete this since I already have something for us to work with. So I just created three text box. Fab, boo, and less. And then I changed the color of each. So the way that you would do that, if you're clicked on the text, you see here, color. If you click on color, it's going to give you the full gamut. You can do the hex code or the RGB, and then it's going to show you all of your document colors, which I love. And then if you roll over them, it's going to show you what that would look like without actually having to click on it, which I also love that feature. So getting back to what we want to do today though, if I'm clicked on my font, and then I look over in my right hand navigation and you have transform, you have text shading, you have text decoration. We want to work with transform today. So I'm going to open that up and it automatically gave me angle, which is not what I'm looking for. We want distort. So you see, it gives us these little handlebars here. And so we're going to be able to shift our design. How fun is that, right? So we would be able to do that on both. And this one, maybe we wanna go in the center, go back, and then work with the handlebars. Distort just gives you so much flexibility. I absolutely love it. So you can, again, this would be your center, so you'd be able to do the entire thing, or you could work with the handlebars and get the wave. And so you can see here that I did this here. So I just did fabulous and I edited each one of those. And so you'd be able to quickly and easily do that here. But I wanna show you a couple other things. So circle automatically gives you a circle and then you can pull on the bar here to open it up. 
so fun. And then with angle, automatically gives you an angle. And you also have the ability to adjust that angle, right? So you can flip it. Arch, again, you can adjust it. It's so easy. And once you have this arch, you could then also work with your bars. This is so much easier than Illustrator, I can't even explain. And then rise, so again, you would be able to still morph it or work with it even more. And then wave, again, same thing. Look at that, how fun is that? And then flag. And of course, longer words are going to look more, you know, like a flag. But the point is, is that you can work with this any way that you want to. So let's move over to our second. So I've gone ahead and distorted each one of these. Okay, and so let's move on to the next. So you can see how now we've already distorted our text, but we can add elements to it. And this is a drop shadow. So if you're looking over into the right-hand navigation and we just go down a little bit, this is your text shading. So you're going to be able to get that drop shadow. If you hover over it with your cursor, you're gonna see drop shadow. Here is line shadow, block shadow, and 3D shadow. But these, there's so much more behind each one of these because you're going to be able to adjust your offset, your angle, your blur. It's a lot of fun to just get in there and play with these. And then this is the bare bones of what Kittle can do. So if for this though, we would be using the text shading of a drop shadow, and then you can actually edit that drop shadow to be anything that you want it to be. How fun is that? And I love that you can, again, just roll over the ones on the bottom that are already in your document colors just to see what they would look like. And so if you wanted to pull in some elements like we talked about in the last video from a place like Creative Fabrica or some of the other sites, so you can come over here and you would just search and be able to find something cute um, some some ribbons, some cute little ghosts, whatever it is, cute little pumpkins and ribbons, all the things, and be able to download those and then upload those back into Kittle. But if you did find something on Creative Fabrica that you wanted to bring in, you see this right here, this little icon, you would be able to click on that and pull in some elements. So you'd just be able to upload a PNG, a JPEG, an SVG, other things from your computer. Or if you wanted to use Kittle's elements, and they do have some, not as many as Creative Fabrica, but they do have some, you would go into elements, and then I had already previously typed in cute ghost. And so here are some of the ghosts that Kittle already has in their platform. And if you notice, this one must be a free version. The little crown is probably telling you that it's one of the paid versions, um, but you could get some elements here as well. Okay, so then you would just, if you wanted something, so let's say we wanted this little guy, we clicked on him and he would pop over and then it's going to tell you if you can edit the colors of him. So then you have color, color, color. Um, you would be able to do some things with border, looks like the border weight around him and then any shadow detail if you wanted to do that. So you would have all kinds of elements within Kittle to work with as well. And so next up, you can also do line shadow. You can do all kinds of things with these, but these are the, some of the ones that I really love. So if you look here, so you still have the distort, the text shading is the second one here, the line shadow, and then you're going to be able to change change that offset, like drag it out, or you're going to be able to angle it. Say you wanted it above or over to the side, not below. You would be able to do that and you can change the color of that outline. So you would be able to make it something else if you wanted it to be black or whatnot and pulling in another element. So these are just some really easy ways to be able to work with text. So let's go ahead and move down to the next one. I, I do also like Rise, which I, this font is barely enough. This one's super cute. So barely enough, and this is just the Rise feature. And so you're going to be able to, again, modify that. And then you would be able to look over and do something like this. Again, I really enjoy the line shadow and then pulling in these cute little pumpkins. But you can see this is an adorable little design all by itself, right? 
Okay, so last but not least, I wanted to show you how to take text and distort it into a shape. And we're just gonna use a really simple shape for this one. But this is something that can give you a challenge in Illustrator where it's very, very easy and straightforward here in Kittle. So if you have your text, and this is the same as before, barely enough, and then I have just simple pin it. And with football season coming, this is awesome. You can put your kid's name in it, you can put your mascot in it, whatever the case may be. So what we would want to do is we would want to move it over top of our pennant. And by the way, we haven't really talked about layers in this video, but this is what your layers panel would look like. So if it's closed, it's going to be down here in the very bottom um, right hand navigation. You would just click on layers, it will pop up, and then you can drag and drop these. Now that is very much like Illustrator, but again, I just find this one to be a little simpler. So what we're going to do though, just pretend that the word was going behind the pennant and that was frustrating you. All you would need to do is move it above the pennant and so then it would be on top. So it's literally like you're just moving it as if it were a deck of cards. You're just moving it to the top of the card deck. So now we have tiger or tigers and what we want to do is we'll place that over top of our pennant and then we are going to go back up into our transformation. We'll open that up and it automatically always goes to angle, I don't know why. But we can test out some of the different things here. We've got wave and rise, and, and those are really cute. But if we go to distort, it gives us all of our handles. So what we're going to do is we're going to start pulling it. And see, this kind of makes it wonky if you straighten that back out, because we want this to be the same. You may have to work with it a little bit. Let's see here. And we'll drag this one down over here and then we will work this in and then take your handlebars and straighten it back out. And then you can also pull the entire thing further in. And so I love how simple this is. I mean, you literally were able to morph it into the shape so easily fantastic right so if we pop over this is how what we just did and then you could also do that with your child's name and again that same way fantastic how easy was that guys i mean it literally took no time Okay, and so the very last thing that you're going to want to do is download your design. And we discussed this in the last video in episode one, but basically your download options right here are going to depend on what type of service that you have with Kittle. So if you just have the free, you're going to be able to download it. You could use it for digital files, that type of thing. But if you want to print this or use it for POD or you want anything high resolution, that will be an upgrade to a paid program. But you would be able to choose your artboards here. So we would just deselect all. And so say we only want to do that last artboard that we just worked on. So we would click here. And then if we click off, we're going to be able to choose the width and height of the paper or of the design. And DPI is going to be your resolution. So if you don't have a paid version, your DPI is most likely going to be um, set at 72. And again, that's not good enough to print from, but it is good enough to just use as a digital file. So I'm going to use 300 DPI because I want to print off my cute little banners and then I'm going to remove my background and I'm going to optimize my quality and then I'll just hit download and that will go to my computer. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that you learned a ton today. And I hope that if you've not already, you'll hop down in the description and check out Kittle, check out Creative Fabrica, check out all the different resources. And if you have any questions, always, always put them in the comments and I will answer those for you guys. And I hope that you will stick around for the rest of the series and I'll pop a couple of other videos up here um, so that you have some things to check out until my episode three. See you there.